We've been asked to find the area of a surface generated by revolving parametric equations around the x-axis. The parametric equations are x equals the natural log of secant t plus tangent t, quantity minus sine of t, and then y equals cosine of t, and the interval on the t, uh, for the parameters from 0 to pi thirds. All right, so we're revolving something around the x-axis, and we have a formula we get to use. The area here is equal to an integral from alpha to beta of 2 pi y times the square root of that formula we know from our arc length calculations. We derived this earlier in our course. So right away I know what I'm going to plug in for y. I'll have to do some work to find what to plug in for dx, dt, and dy, dt, and then we'll take it from there. And on the outset of it, this looks like it might not be so pretty of a calculation, but we're gonna find out quickly that some nice things happen. So let's go on and find our two derivatives. So dx dt, one over secant t plus tangent t, times the derivative of secant t plus tangent t. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent of t, of course, in both spots. Um, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I can't forget that there was a minus sign on there, so its derivative is minus cosine. All right, so let's put this together as a fraction, and along the way here, I'm gonna factor out a secant on top. So I have secant t. And when I factor that out, I have a tangent t plus a secant t, and I see something nice that's gonna happen. I have a secant t plus a tangent t in both places, and those cancel, and so dx dt is just secant minus cosine. dy dt doesn't take nearly as much time to compute. Take the derivative of cosine, and we get a minus sine. Let's work on the square root part of our integrand to make it a little easier to deal with. I always like taking care of things like that on some, you know, some scratch paper before I get to my integration. And so I get dx dt, I need to square it. And so let's see what happens when I square that. I'll have secant squared t minus, well, if I multiply cosine and secant together, I get one, so I have a minus two there, plus cosine squared t. Squaring uh, sine is not very hard. I'll just have plus sine squared. All of that under my radical. Sorry, I ran out a little bit of room there. Cosine squared plus sine squared, of course, is one. And so looking at this, I have secant squared t minus one under that radical. Well, I know secant squared t minus one is tangent squared t. And so I'm gonna get an absolute value of tangent here, but because I'm between zero and pi thirds where tangent's positive, it's really just tangent. So that's the square root expression that appears in my integrand. So we're ready to integrate. We have an integral from zero to pi over three of two times pi times y cosine of t times tangent t dt. All right. So if I think about that, I could pull the two pi out front, still have an integral from zero to pi over three. Cosine times tangent, well that's cosine times sine over cosine. So this is really just an integral of two, well, two pi times the integral from zero to two pi thirds of sine. So this is a problem that was created by someone to look challenging, but after we get everything settled, it, it's not all that bad. So let's see, antiderivative of sine is minus cosine. We need to evaluate from zero to pi over three. So I have two pi times, and I, I plug in a pi over three where cosine's equal to one half, so that's a minus one half minus, plug in a zero where cosine's equal to one minus a minus one. Well, that's a half times two pi in the answer. The area of the surface is just pi. I thought we'd take a minute to look at the uh, parametric equations, or better said, the graph of those parametric equations. And that's what they graph on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we're taking that curve and revolving it around the x-axis. And I think I can even see what, you know, that would look like as a 3D object. But I also wanted to show you what the parametric equations look like if I expanded the interval. We're not going to find this length, 
but I just think this is a cool graph. And so if I expand the interval, I see we, we were just looking at a little piece up there. It's a much cooler graph if we expand the um, parameter interval. Well, we found our surface area to be pi. That's all we were asked to do. So I'll talk to y'all later.